Okay, so we just talked about body comp or the overview of body composition. Now we're going to talk about different methods that we can use to, to calculate, predict, measure body composition. So here are our three objectives for these next several slides. And so really, we're going to talk about five different ways of measuring body composition. Okay, so we've got this first one, which is where we're just measuring density. And so density is, like we said last time, is mass divided by volume. The problem is it's really difficult to measure volume, right? So if you remember from math, uh, you can measure the volume of a cube relatively easy, you know, length times width times height. You can measure the the volume of a sphere pretty easy. I think it's four thirds pi r cubed. Um, but we're neither a cube nor a, are we a, um, uh, like a, uh, a sphere. That's the word I'm looking for. And so this can be very difficult to calculate the, the volume of a human being. All right, we come in all different shapes and sizes. It's not, we're not all the exact same proportions. So it makes it challenging. And so this uh, leads to one way, or this is one way, is something called hydrostatic weighing. Now, um, as you can see here, this is a hydrostatic weighing tank. Um, it's basically a small pool. Um, you've got the, the subject will sit on this platform. And basically what they have to do is they have to, as they go underneath the water, exhale as much water as they possibly can. And so um, this can be, and while they're doing this, they're, they're measuring how much the subject weighs. And really what they're doing is they're measuring the amount of water that's displaced. Okay. And by doing this, they can figure out the difference between what's they weigh on land versus opposed to what they weigh in the water. Um, and that gives, gives us an idea of what their body volume is. Um, it can be pretty accurate, but it can also be inaccurate if subjects um, don't get rid of the air properly. So if they have bad technique, it's going to be inaccurate. Um, but it's not really great for estimating body fat because it uses that two compartment model. And so you're comparing fat free to fat mass. And as we discussed last time, the fat free mass has a very uh, different densities depending on what it is. Okay, so um, kind of another way to look at this and the reason we use this is that fat floats. It's less dense than water, so it floats, doesn't displace the water. Um, and so that gives you an idea. Uh, but, and kind of tying into this, and if you, it, you might have seen this or noticed this on the chart that we had at the end of the last video is um, athletes have different body compositions. And for example, swimmers actually generally have a high body fat than other athletes because it helps them to float. And if you're floating on top of the water, it makes it a little easier to propel yourself through it. Uh, the next one is called air plethysmography. It's a fun word to say. This is the bod pod. Um, and so we've got one of these in our lab. And instead of using displacement of water, we use it by displacing air. And so this bod pod, and I don't know why my clicker is not working or my pen, but basically this bod pod here, we know the volume of air that can be contained inside um, the bod pod uh, when it's empty. So we put the subject in, they displace uh they displace a lot of the air, and then based on a lot of math, we can determine body volume. Okay, the gold standard, the best one, right, is what we call DEXA. So it stands for Dual Energy X-Ray um, Absorptiometry. I can never say that last word. Um, it's generally considered to be the gold standard of the best. It uses an X-ray, okay, and it helps us determine more specifically what kind of tissue and how much of each kind of tissue we have all right so we can differentiate between bone soft tissue fat muscle that sort of thing and it's a total body scan um, we've actually got one of those we have a dex at least we have one on campus i know there's one in the ahs building um, but you have to be licensed to use it and so uh, unfortunately we don't have one in our lab but it would be it would be great for us to be able to use that and show you but we have to be an x-ray tech, I believe, to use it. Okay. So this leads to what you will likely do in lab or what I believe you do in lab is just skin fold. Okay. It's most commonly used because it's 
relatively easy to do. All you're doing is you're measuring skin fold thickness on, on multiple sites throughout the body, generally three, or three um, is one of the examples, but there can be more. Um, but the problem is you're only measuring subcutaneous fat and your organs have a lot of fat surrounding them. So what happens is, is they put the values of each of these skin fold sites, they put them into a predictive equation. And like we talked about on the first video, um, a model is only good, or excuse me, a prediction is only good as the assumptions, or the model is only as good as its assumptions. And so if the assumptions aren't great, the values aren't going to be great. But with the assumptions, there's going to be error. So two variable equations that are used often um, underestimate the density of lean people, um, but they overestimate the density of obese people. And so um, there are some skin fold equations that use that are quadratic. So instead of just using like 3x plus 2x or whatever, it, you get into some x squareds. So you have kind of a, a curvilinear relationship there. Now with the three site, the most common ones are the women, we use the triceps, the superiliac, and the thigh, whereas males, we do we make these measurements on the pectorals, the abdomen, and the thigh. So something to think about, and we'll discuss in class, why do you think we use different sites between men and women okay and so think about that we'll talk about that in uh, lecture that should come up in lecture um, the last one that we're going to, to discuss real quick is bioelectrical impedance and so what it is is you just pass an electrical current from one side of the body to the other so we've got this uh, weird looking steering wheel thing and you hold on to it and what it does is it shoots an electrical current through your body. Um, but conduction is affected by many things. And so there's some definite air with, her, with it. So depending on what's in your body and what ions and stuff, that can determine how fast the current goes through. Because the conduction rate, like it says here, is higher in fat-free mass, not moss. Okay, so if you have... Um, more fat mass, the current's going to take a little bit longer to travel through your body. And then this would say, oh, your body fat is something. Okay. But like I said, and like it says up there, if you've got a lot of water in your system or just a little bit of water, it can be, it can skew the measurement. Okay. Uh, water tends to speed up the conduction. And so that basically sim uh, simulates fat-free mass. And so if you have a lot of water in you when you use this bioelectrical impedance, then it's going to um, really over or excuse me understate how much fat you actually have. All right. And one of the things to to recognize is that um, as this electrical current is passing through a person's body it's going to go the fastest way possible. So it just wants to, to get from one side to the other, and it's going to go through the path of least resistance. And so that can also cause the measurement to be skewed. Again, one thing to consider, we talked about this at the end of the last video, is that body composition plays a huge role. Okay, Males generally have less um, fat mass. They're more lean. Um, we store fat around our abdomen, think, uh, you know, kind of like beer belly, that sort of thing. Whereas females have more fat mass. Um, they store fat hips and thighs. And if women have a very low body percentage, that can lead to amenorrhea, which is where their period stops. Okay. And so just kind of uh, another way to look at this is that think about the type of athletes, the type of female athletes that are generally on the slender side or on the lean side is probably a better way to put that. Okay, what comes to mind for me are runners. And so um, in many cases, not all, and, uh, but in many cases with runners, it's difficult for them to get pregnant because they have such low body fat and their body's basically saying, we're not in a place where we can have a baby. And so they don't, have a, they don't uh, ovulate. Um, and so if there's no egg, then you can't get pregnant. All right, and so... It's another one of those things that the body's, that your body's just kind of aware of or that a woman's body's aware of saying we're not in a position where we can get pregnant, so we're not going to put ourselves in a position to get pregnant. And with that, we will end on body composition measurement.